All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the properties of parabolas. We're going to spend a couple of days talking about this. So parabolas have been what we've been working on basically forever, but we've not actually told you that just yet. So anytime you see a shape like this, this is what we call a parabola, a parabola. Parabola always kind of makes this U shape. Now, it's really important to know a couple things about parabolas. These are not straight lines. Like, I can't just connect the dots because if I do that, I'm never going to hit all of the dots at one time, right? So this is definitely has some curvature to it. Now, this shape, again, is called a parabola. Parabolas are modeled by what we call quadratic equations. So remember those equations we've been working with all along? The ax squared plus bx plus c? Yeah, these things are quadratic equations, and when I graph them, I get a shape that looks like this. Now, there's a couple of key parts to a parabola that we care about. One of those parts, one of the main parts, I should say, is what we call the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is right here. That's the line that if I were to fold that parabola, it would land right on top of itself if I did, right? It's like the fold line for where it would... Um, where we would need to fold in order to make it land on itself. We call this the axis of symmetry. Sometimes we shorten that up and just call it AOS to like abbreviate it, but it's still always talking about that fold line basically. A couple of other key parts that we look for are our x-intercepts. Now our x-intercepts, we can see the arrows pointed right here and right here. Our x-intercepts are points. Right? So we want to make sure that we are writing down the coordinates for those points correctly. So remember, anytime I write a point, we always write it with the x value first and the y value second. So the x value, if I look at my x-axis for this first point, is negative 1. And the y value, right? if I look at this one, would be at 0. So this would be negative 1, 0 for that x-intercept. For my x-intercept over here, if we write out that point, it looks like that one has an x value of 3 and it has a y value of 0, so we would say 3 comma 0 for that point. Now, again, we've talked about a couple of different things. Axis of symmetry, x-intercepts, but we also have the y-intercept. Now, you're very familiar with the y-intercept because we've worked with it before. The y-intercept is just the point where we cross the y axis, right? So where does our graph cross the y-axis? Sometimes we can see it really easily, other times we can't. Now the y-intercept is also thought of as a point often, so when we come over here we could rewrite this as 0 comma negative 3. Now it's really important to know um, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, but one last thing we can't forget about is actually what we call the vertex. Now, the vertex could maybe be the most important piece on this parabola, and what that vertex represents is it represents kind of the turning point. It's where does it get really low, or sometimes we see our parabolas flipped upside down, where does it get really high? Now, in this situation, our vertex it has an x value of a positive 1, right? If I trace this down, it goes up to 1, and it has a y value of a negative 4. So this would be the point 1, negative 4. Now, in this situation, since our, or our parabola has a low point, we like to call this a minimum. If it had a high point, like it was turned over and went like this, uh, let me draw you a picture. If it went like this, this would be a maximum point. It's still the vertex, but in this situation, it would have been a maximum. Right? So we can either have low points or high points. If they're low points, they are minimums. If they're high points, they're maximums. Now, I think the last thing we talk about here, and it's kind of a big one, is what we call concavity. So concavity. C-A-V-I-T-Y. Okay. Now, what concavity is, is concavity is, does your parabola open upwards or does it open downwards? This parabola over here opens upwards, so this one, let's just write this down, opens upwards. So what we say, mathematically speaking, this is where we use like more complicated language than we need to, we say that this one is con 
cave up because the opening happens as our graph goes upwards. It gets bigger and wider. So this one we would say is concave up. Now over here on the side, I gave you a picture of a graph that opened the other way. Since this one is opening downwards, we would say that this one is concave down. Right, so we're either gonna have concave up or concave down. Now let's try to look at a couple different graphs. So here's another graph. Our directions today, what we're gonna be actually doing is we're gonna be listing out all of the special parts on this parabola, their features. The first part this one wants us to list out is the vertex. So remember, the vertex is where our graph is at its highest point or its lowest point, it's kind of that turning point. So our vertex is going to be this point down here. Now, they want us to list out the point. So when we come up here, the point for that vertex, it looks like we are at one, negative four. So one comma negative four. Remember, we always list the X value first and the Y value second. Now, the second thing they want us to talk about is our axis of symmetry. Now remember, in our picture above, our axis of symmetry was the line on which our graph could have been reflected and it would have landed on each other. So in this situation, we can see that line right here. Now we've drawn our axis of symmetry, which is great, but what we wanna do is we actually wanna list it. And the way you're gonna list it is you're gonna say X equals, it's always gonna be X equals for your axis of symmetry. And what you're gonna say is X equals whatever number on the X axis that it goes through. So this time it went through the number one, so we're gonna say X equals one, and that will be our axis of symmetry. Now on our graph, we can see that we have two X intercepts. It looks like we are gonna have an X intercept right here and an X intercept right there. Our X intercepts are where we cross our X axis. So I'm gonna underline that in blue right now because we circled those in blue on our graph. Remember, our Y intercept is where we cross the Y axis. We're only ever gonna have one Y intercept, but in a lot of situations, we're gonna have two X intercepts. So I'm gonna underline this one in red just so we can tie those together. Now what we need to do is list the points. So looking at that first one over here, since it goes through x equals negative one, we can say it's negative one, zero. The x-intercepts are always gonna have a y value that's zero. The other x-intercept passes through when x is equal to three. So we're gonna be able to say three comma zero because the y value is zero at that point. Now if we look at our y-intercept, the bottom one here, we know that our x value is zero in that one, but our y value is negative three. That's kind of why our intercepts are important. It's because that's where we get all these situations where either x is zero or where y is zero. Now, concavity. This one is asking you, does our graph open upwards or downwards? And since our graph's getting bigger at the top, we're gonna say that this is concave up. And then the last question just asks, does this graph have a high point or a low point? Well, if we follow it along, it looks like we get lower, 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 and then down here at the very bottom is our low point because on the other side, we go back up. So since it has a low point, we say that this has a minimum. And that's it, that's all we're doing today. We're just identifying those key features because later on in this unit, we're gonna actually start to graph these things. Here's our next one. So in this one, our vertex, remember that's either the high point or the low point. It looks like I can see that point right here. Now for this one, it looks like we have an X value of negative one and we have a Y value of a positive four. So our vertex will be at negative one, positive four. Now our axis of symmetry, remember that's the line that we could fold this on and it would be equal. Now, if you notice, your axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex of the graph. To write the equation, though, it can get a little tough. Just remember, it's always x equals, 
and then it's whatever number you pass through. So in this one, we pass through negative one, so we can put a negative one right there. Now, for our x-intercepts, we're gonna have two of them. We have one of them right here, and we have the other one of them right there. So we're gonna be able to say negative three comma zero and one comma zero, right? Because those are the points. The x value was negative three, the y value was zero, and then the x value was one and the y value was zero. Now let's look for our y-intercept. Remember, our y-intercept is going to happen when our graph crosses the y-axis. So it looks like that happens right here. And that point is the point, well, the x value would be zero and the y value would be a positive three. So that will be our y-intercept. Now, when we ask you about concavity, remember, that's just asking you, does the graph open upwards or does the graph open downwards? If the graph opens downwards, like this one does, we would say that this is concave down. Just like that. Last question, I think this one's the easiest. It's, is it a maximum or a minimum? All that's asking you is, is this a high point or a low point? Well, since it looks like it's at the top of the mountain, we're gonna say it's a high point, so we're gonna say this is a maximum. And just like that, kids, that's all we are doing today. So for your homework, you're gonna see, I think I have four of these that you need to go through and complete. Good luck, I hope this goes well for you. If you have any questions, please make sure you are reaching out and asking. Thanks, guys, have a great day.